Last time on Lawful Stupid, this light has radiated from your silver disc and your ship begins to sink. It doesn't take much time to be submerged in water. And the first thing that you'll know is that you're not wet and you realize you're not sinking, you're diving. You guys have been sinking lower and lower until you've come to the base of the largest coral mountain and you can see this cave that you start to pass into. Your ship goes up and it comes above the water and the light fades. The disc falls to the deck with a clatter. You travel until you see Rombius. This is the last stand, the last bastion. If this fails, our entire mission fails. Oh, there. Hello, um, Fate Campus. We're seeking to dock here. We have prisoners from the ram that we're transporting. Some of the men come up from below decks and they have Fig and Tea Leafly and they also have Ryder. That is a, a property of the ship. I don't doubt that, but um, we will need to examine it. You will do no such thing unless I am present. And so you set foot for the first time in Rombies to take apart your individual tasks. The first thing I have to say, and this might surprise you, everybody with Devin headphones off. Jingaling, my friend. Jingaling. <laughs> I, this is so awkward for me playing a girl voice. Let's do it. Let's get this over with. Jingaling. Uh, are you there? Hey there, Jacko! Jacobo, um... <laughs> I can I see, guess. uh... You've made it. Yes. Um, some strange things. The tiny disc, that's how they get in. There is an underground tunnel. Now, the disc provides safety for the ship to go underneath very deep. Um, <laughs> underneath the mountains... And, and back up to the other side, and it's a grand sight to the other side. Giant walls, there are uh, pegasi, they're so cute, um, and, and like wyvern flying around. It's heavily fortified. Hmm. Additional mission. God, I haven't even got the first one completed. Come on. I'm and one you, person. Don't forget the disc is your secondary mission, tertiary mission. If you can. Okay. Find a way to sabotage these flying beasts. Um, all of them? They have the only way to kill them all. And that's not going to be easy. If they have any sort of stable, perhaps you could poison the feed or the water supply. Anything to debilitate them. Your primary mission takes, of course, priority. Your secondary mission is the disc. Your tertiary mission is, if possible, disable these these flying beasts. Listen, I think well, I think I'm on the way to getting the, the schematics you need, the designs, whatever it is. You guys are asking a whole lot. You're being compensated fairly. Listen, like I didn't get the one job, you keep adding jobs. We'll talk about the second and third order effects following the schematics. We haven't had an agent inside of Rombius in our long history. So and I want is... you to remember that. Jackabo. Jackabo, I won't forget. Thank you. I'm going to be making daily contact with you while you're inside Rombius. What is uh, the best time for me to make contact with you and be detected? <laughs> Probably nights, late nights. Just wake me up. Just, just late. Just make sure that I'm not around anyone. And if I don't answer, you don't hear me talk. That's why. Just, um, I will make contact with you tomorrow. I look forward to it. The eyes of the I'm alliance kidding. are upon you. The what? The eyes of the alliance are upon you. You guys and your phrases. Good luck. Thanks, Yakubo. Headphones on. Uh, so you guys are moving. Uh, we've got Garrett and Oslo doing a prisoner drop, and we've got um, Peregrine and uh, Sky Song accompanying the rider. 
Yes. Yes. V rider. Okay. We will do uh, the prisoner drop first. Let's go. Let's go. Oslo <laughs> and Garrett, uh, you guys are, are led um, away from this dock area into the, the center of this fortress. Everything is just fortified. You see soldiers everywhere and they they, no they're not wearing a common uniform but everybody's wearing everybody's armed for battle everybody has weapons and armor and everybody seems to be a little bit on edge as you kind of walk through um everything is kind of um labyrinth it's not like an open city you are in you are indoors pretty much at all times um so you don't see the sky above you particularly um you are going through kind of corridors and moving through streets and you're moving through like it's it's, it's kind of like a labyrinth in nature and almost if you think about it may possibly by design for the, if there were to be any sort of invader they would have to kind of wind through um it's very hard for you to keep your bearings um, as you guys are just not familiar with the area and you're going through all these twists and turns and just trying to follow these guards that eventually come to um, what you can only assume is a holding area of some kind. It appears to be cells um, with, with uh, locked doors, um, some sort of prison. So we're leaving him here, right? Oh, one of the guards, um, yes, uh, they'll be brought into their cells and, uh, information will be extracted. They're pretty tough, so don't go easy on them. Yeah, um, do our best. Uh, do we get, like, a, like a receipt, like a coat check situation? <laughs> <laughs> um, no. Uh, you guys wanted to, to escort us to while well, we took the prisoner I, for whatever reason. Um, okay, but, you know. makes sense. Uh, do I recognize anybody? Uh, you can't really like cell? see into the, each individual cell because um, they're not, they're like, they're not like big gate Open. door gotcha. where you can see through the bars. It's like a, a wooden door with like a, a one grate yeah, yeah. on the top there. You'd have to actually like we look in and see. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, um Okay. Uh, uh, Oslo, if there's nothing else, I suppose we should uh, head back or head out. I think they talked about going to the cantina. Uh, dear God, friend. Uh, didn't catch your name, by the way. Roderick. Nice to meet you, Roderick. The name is Garrett. Um, that said, how do we get to the cantina? From here? Uh... It's kind of hard um, for newcomers to navigate. Uh, would you like me to do a scorching? That's, uh, yeah, that's fine. Also, uh, fine with you. Yeah, well, is, are there any kind of like shop kind of things here? Uh, there's a quartermaster. Huh. You don't have a shop? You don't have a market? No. Um, all the, all the goods here belong I mean, there's no need. That's so weird. What kind of place is this? It's a military organization, dear. That's what, that's, that's sad. Okay, let's just go to the cantina, I guess. Yeah, so we had that. Yeah. Uh, Oslo, when you have a military regime like this, there isn't what uh, you understand as free trade. The, it, most of the bartering is done through the quartermaster. If purchasing is even allowed through the quartermaster, usually it's just assigned and given. Um, they're essentially an army. Ah. Uh, did, did we just join the army? Kind of. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Do you feel tougher? You look tougher. No. Huh. Uh, I'll take looking tougher. I don't. That. I don't know how I feel about that. Well, it was. It was in the lengthy contract that we were had. Okay. Not important. <laughs> Speaking of contracts, um, I do. Devin, real quick, can you make a Constitution saving throw as Finnegan? 
What? Excuse me? What's this Finnegan? Correct. Terrifying. Uh, we're going to go back <gasps> over to Team Ryder. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Wonderful and dark. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what you want from me. Um, fan, fantasy Enterprise always gets gets their thing. <laughs> they always get their dude. Oh no! Um, so you guys are once also you, you see the same thing um, as you take kind of through this labyrinth like um, city. Uh, eventually, you are both brought to a uh, workshop. Uh, is this? I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. I'm standing as close to Ryder as they'll let me stand, with like my hand on his yeah. his head, if possible. What? What exactly are you going to do to him? I. Uh, unfortunately, he has to be um, examined thoroughly. I'm gonna look at Ryder. Is that, is that okay, Ryder? Yeah. <laughs> you aren't going to shut him off, are you? We will like. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. Um, <clears throat> Heim's Mark and um, a a small gnome uh, appears with you know v- very typical like you know balding head with like tufts of hair sticking up in the back and he's got like goggles on um, and a little lab coat and he's got like various tools across his belt um, I yes uh, I've got a um, very interesting something for you to take a look at oh yeah what do we got here um oh my It um, seem, uh, I, I, I take the feels. I, I get the vibe fr- from Captain. Uh, excuse me, Himes, Mark. Is it? Is it? Uh, yes. Uh, it, um, it seems that my friend, if it's not obvious to you, is is quite upset at the proposition of of having, having to, uh, as you say, take apart or what's the word you're using. Uh, it's kind of like an autopsy, really. Okay, cool. Let's not use that word <sighs> right now. Um, it's kind of an emotional um, event. Wh- why exactly do you have to do this this autopsy of sorts? What's yes? What's what is what the, the threat here? Uh, well, one of the the greatest threats that currently poses uh, us here at Rombius is um, the hounds. You know of them, surely. I've heard. I've heard legends of them. Yes. Well, this is their number one tool of um, of the trade. It's what they use um, all of them uh, exclusively to, well, um, kill, maim, destroy, terrorize um, the free people of the Sapphire Seas. Uh, Heims Mark, which you you build many things. Yes. Of course. And the creations that you have are they are they smarter than you, or are they limited only by what you can do to create them? That would be very difficult for me to create something smarter than I am. I suppose um, some sort of uh, self-replicating learning uh, device on a long enough timeline uh, could possibly um, be equal or, or exceed my own level of intellect, but um, it would be. Very difficult, and and the time not impossible. What kind of timeline are we looking at here? Well, I uh, you know I, I I just celebrated my two hundred thirty sixth birthday. Congratulations, so, happy um, birthday! For, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, so, if I were to create something uh, that was self learning, um, it would have to at least equal that time. Of course, I would be aging and learning and growing at the same rate. Um, uh, assuming they will have an exponential rate of learning mm-hmm. at first because they have a limited knowledge very base good, yes. uh, as opposed to my vast knowledge base mm-hmm. so it would be very much difficult for Absolutely. me to increase upon that at the same yes. rate so um, I would say somewhere around let him finish, let him finish. Uh, 683 <sighs> you years that is that is impressive 
I'm amazed, I'm shocked, I'm impressed. My point, Hans Mark. Um, Captain, what did you say this this animal's name is? His name Rider is Rider. was programmed by, and, and Captain, correct me if, if I'm wrong, a... Uh... This is a friend and a keepsake from the former this captain of my ship. Was it is a weapon? No. He is a companion. He is dangerous. So am I. You're not taking me apart to examine me. Frown upon that. (laughs) Times mark, how might we avoid destroying Ryder in in the way that seems inevitable to you? What what could you do to recode him yet keep his his faculties so he recognizes who we are and we're able to maintain Ryder as an assistant? Surely, oh, surely uh, no, you're a man yeah. of, of enough intelligence to do so easily. You mistake me entirely. I, I, I wouldn't do anything to harm this creature. Um, he, he's very valuable. The, the things that we can learn from him. I, I intend to reverse engineer him. Um, I, I would never cause any harm to him because uh, he's just too, too much value, too much, too, too much to learn. Captain Ryder is, is of extreme mm. importance to you. I... I Am I understanding that correctly? Hans Mark. Yes. We Similar to that. The problem bird. is we don't want to lose Ryder. And I think the fear is that Ryder, we feel, is at risk of, of some sort of harm. I think what the compromise might be is that if you're going to perform any type of, of work or inspection, that Captain here or myself be allowed to stand by as you do so. Uh, the process um, should take s- some time. Um, I-, I don't know uh, what your plans are. Uh, I probably need to work on this for the next... to perfectly re- re-engineer, um, to find all the weaknesses, to really get into what makes this thing tick and be able to replicate it. Um, probably Three years, eight months? Nope. Not happening. Could you could you take something out of him that you can work on? Much like a part, figure there's a part you can replace and give him a new part so you can still study what you need, yet giving him the remnants that make him a rider, maybe except for perhaps the protocols he had before. I'm not sure how it all works. But the there's his previous owner would not have put anything in him that would harm us. And I refuse to let you tinker with uh, him that much. And he kind of, he looks towards the commandant. I, 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 um, uh, he kind of speaks up. Uh, it really is quite important for us to, um, you don't understand, I think, the, the depth that these creatures are capable of committing what they are, what they can do, what they have done. You are trying to judge this one creature based on what the others have done? I have not seen Ryder act out in any kind of violent manner, ever. Even when he, it would have very much behooved him to do so. I, I, I'm not suggesting that uh, this creature is in itself dangerous what I'm suggesting is that the danger that faces us is not learning what we can about its kind its ilk that seems practical that I understand that from from a military strategic standpoint perhaps the perhaps the compromise captain is this as long as we remain here at Rhombus um, Ryder can spend his days here and we can visit at will. I'm looking to both of them for a nod. Visit whenever we want to check in. No, let me finish. Uh, Until we are ready to leave, so you gather your information for as long as we are present and then we leave. He is, is our property. We will go. If you want to study him further, you come with us on our ship. You are 
new citizens of Rambius, and <laughs> I understand. Citizens, nonetheless, with all the rights that are that are given to emperors. Right. That I don't think you quite understand how things work here. We are at war. And it's not a war like any that's ever been waged. We're not fighting for the lives of men and women. That would be simple. We all can see that. We're fighting for something greater. We're fighting against tyranny. We're fighting for liberty. Individual freedoms. And there must be sacrifices. See, from li- I understand where you're coming from. I, honestly, war is a terrible thing. The problem is if we begin to forsake the small things we enjoy in life, just so we can worry about things that may come down the road whenever they might come, you spend your entire life in fear and misery. And what we're doing now is saying, this this dog, uh, we may find out more information about him, and so you can't have him, and yes, he belonged to a friend of yours, and you don't seem to care that you had a great relationship and that we're taking some piece of him away from you. You seem to be forgetting that people are still people, and not everyone is able to fight your war. Surely we'll, we'll live the consequences of it, but we can't all live in fear. If I may. I have lived 20 some odd years without your fight for liberty, and if I need to, I will take Ryder and get back on my ship and sail away. I don't need your citizenship. I won't let you take him apart. You have done, um, Rambius for great service. <laughs> we took two people here. Don't call me that. That That's great not service. so similar. You've brought us the tool in our fight, whether you wanted to or not. Because you have acted honorably, and because uh, I have no ill will towards you, if you choose to refuse citizenship, if you want to sail away, I no harm will befall you or anyone on your crew. But I cannot allow this creature to leave. I'm gonna kneel down in front of Ryder. We haven't been particularly well acquainted. I don't know. But I'm saying this as quietly as possible. Delmore is gone now, and I don't know if he's still alive. I don't know where he is. I don't know if we'll find him again. And you are the only thing I have left of him. And he was one of the few people who gave me a chance when I had nothing else. And you're a robot dog. And I'm telling you this. Can you... When we come back, if we come back for him, when you're done, Will he be the same? Will he still remember everything? Uh, as I said, I, I, I would do everything in, in my power to ensure that I preserve uh, every piece of him. Uh, in fact, And he takes out some of his tools and he begins I'm to work. Moving in front of Ryder. What's he doing? 
Explain to me right now, and I'm not let you do it. I'm trying to help. All right. Step aside. He begins to tinker and begins to open up Ryder various components. And you see, kind of maybe for the first time, um, apart from where Delmore had been working on Ryder, and you could see some of the internals there, there's a, it's not just bits and pieces, not just metal parts, there's, there's a sense of, of, of an organism here, there, there's, there's signs of life and energy and moving, and he removes small, And you look at it and you know this is incredibly similar to the orbs that Delmore would make. But it's got this faint orange pulsating glow. Heismark takes it, he sets it aside, and he closes his eyes, and he holds his hands out to it. And there's a flash of the arcane some sort of magical energy. And there's two of these orbs sitting there now, pulsating in perfect rhythm with each other, perfectly synchronized. And he places one back inside Ryder, who had become motionless, and then begins to move again, and examining it, taking a look at it, can't really tell any sort of difference, and he goes... Um, this, this is more or less, um, it. This is, um, what makes it what it is. This is its heart. These are, this is him? This is, everything else is, is a shell. The same as, um, your, your body is to your being, your sense of self. This is... You said it was right. Yes. This is writer's self. He takes the orb and he hands it to you. I take it very, very carefully. No matter what else I do to the shell, no matter what I do to writer, to try to learn, what makes writer writer is right there in your hand. I think you would, in the least. I, I think that that's a fair trade-off for that we, we have to build the new rider. Is that right? I don't know enough to disagree with you. I mean, like I said, that, that is rider. Um, the rest of it's just... Yes, well, it needs a shell. If you if you pulled your heart and brain out and said, "Hey, here's Heim's mark," it'd still be weird. Do you get where I'm coming from? We need something to put Ryder into, hmm? or he's not Ryder. He's, he's this orange glowing ball. Uh, like I th- could you could you help with that, or does it make him another Ryder that you need to study? I'm confused. Didn't you just give us the thing you said we can't take? Well, it was not exactly easy, but I was able to make a copy. So I have the copy, you have the original. Um, So that should give me plenty to study, plenty to work on, um, without you losing what is writer. So you you said it was a friend who made this, right? Yes. Well, I'm not a stranger to Emmerich. And the fact that he's not here right now, and Ryder is, well, that tells me that something happened. Does the name the Jackal mean anything to you? He's one of the hounds. There's the answer. Is he alive? There's the answer, and it's the best one I have. 
Well, if you're able to find him, Nick, and if you're able to get that orb to him, then they'll still have Link. I'm gonna put the orb in my priest pack. Kneel down in front of Ryder again. Stay strong. Mm-hmm. Couldn't we give you the back. orb and we take Ryder? That doesn't make sense. Same thing you're studying, is it? I need to know all of the components and how they interact. Um, I can't do that without... Oh, the gosh. Oh, okay. Got it. Load of crap. Captain, <laughs> let's get out of here. I've referred enough. Ryder, I'm sorry. We tried our best. I wish you good luck. If you do anything you shouldn't, I will slit your throat so fast the guts won't hear you scream. I'm going to turn and walk away. I wasn't going to go that far. Quick question. She's very upset. Can we come visit while we are here? Not a lot. I know you're probably a busy man saving the whole world in, in this war. But can we visit from time to time to see how he's doing? Ah, uh, that shouldn't be an issue. How do I need do I need to have um, Seafoam here escort me, the Commandant? Or who who allows us to come see? Oh, you'll just come see me. I... Knock three times. I work in the code. Walk in. There's a receptionist. No, we'll just will just come in. I, I live and work here. Thank you, Hans Mark. I'm sorry for the abrupt rudeness. I appreciate your time. You seem to you care a lot, and I can appreciate that. Thanks. Um, I, I doubt she'd hear you, but um, you get the chance to tell that I am sorry. I will pass along your sentiments. Commandant? Yeah, uh, yeah. What can I do for you? Just, well, I guess, Captain, what, what, what are the plans now? I think we'd mentioned the cantina, was it? Ah, yes. Cantina. What better thing to do when you land in a new city than visit the only bar? Let's go there. Can you take us there? Ah, uh, yes, of course. Follow me. And then, uh, while that was happening, it took a little bit longer. Um, so... You two, Oslo and Garrett, have already made your way to the cantina. It is um, standard fare. So they have like grog and they have ale and there's food, but it is what you would expect from a military canteen. Which Oslo doesn't know what to expect from a military canteen because she's never been to a military area. So. <laughs> Uh, it is not great food. It is um, the good news is you don't have to pay for anything, huh. so that's exciting. Um, it is, <laughs> but it is very bare fare. Um, there is uh, tables set up. Um, there's not like music or gambling or dancing or anything like that. It is like a cafeteria. It's a mess hall. It's a mess hall. Excellent. Uh, hmm. Yeah, gonna go in, get an ale if available, if not, and a water, uh, and then whatever meal they're serving, the non-vegetarian version, uh, and have a seat at a table and motion for Oslo to follow. So I think she goes. She also <laughs> she asks for the special, but God knows it's, they probably just hand her fucking meat or something. Yeah, I mean, um, so, so you you both are, are uh, receive like yeah. it's it's roast fish on basically like a bed of leeks. I mean, it, it is. Hmm. Oh, that doesn't the, the quality does not stop Oslo from just wolfing it down. Yeah. Um, she's like Garrett. They didn't make me pay. I don't know if yeah. I. I'm not gonna tell him. Yeah, they didn't the, make me pay. Oslo, that's fine. Don't tell them. You got one over okay. them on them. Good job. Uh, hey, dude. Uh, go ahead. Huh? No, go ahead, dear. Uh, I was gonna see if you wanted to play dice. Um, no, I don't want to gamble with you. Uh, you've already made no. it quite clear that the things you're good at are the things I don't see. So, seems yeah, seems bad on my <laughs> part. Um, 
I was going to ask, because I haven't been on this boat long, um, you seem to have one of those hounds. That seems odd to me. What happened? Uh, Ryder? I suppose. He belonged to one of our friends. He made him. Ah, interesting. And we we lost our friend. And we don't really know what happened to him. But I don't think he's coming back. Hmm. Well, that's disappointing, I'm sure. Yeah. And I don't know what we're going to do with Ryder, but I know that... Perry's not happy right now. Right. And I know it seems like she's kind of a mean captain right now, but you guys just like you guys walked in on some shit, okay? Uh, yeah, that's uh, air apparent. Um, yeah, I, your captain's not going to be happy. She brought a hound to the resistance. Um, that's not going to end well for her. Um, uh, I get it, we stumbled into what appears to be a traumatic time for you, but all the same, uh, Skysong and I have a mission. We're here to do it, I suppose. Well, what is that mission? Uh, you know, you might think that I'm the shot call, based on the magic, um, but Skysong really runs point on that. I just uh, keep him alive and keep everything else around him not alive. He sure does like doing the talking, doesn't he? Uh, yes. God love him, someone has to. But, um, Oslo, uh, may I ask, I don't see many kobolds around. Um, where did you come from? And how did you end up involved with the resistance? That seems wild. Well, first of all, the Alliance are assholes. That's how I ended up with the resistance, all right? Kind of shrugs. Ah. Uh, well, there is an island where there is a bunch of us, kobolds, mm -hmm. and there is a bunch of goblins, and we all kind of just like, you know, lived in the same area. And goblins are up during the day mostly, and kobolds are up during the night mostly, and we just kind of got along, sort of. Eh, sort of. Yes, that's that is where you were. But how did you end up um, uh, against the alliance? A rebel, thief, possibly somewhere in between. She gives you a very like. suspicious look like she like she doesn't know what all she wants to tell you like hey look do you like you made me you made me a dragon for a minute and that was really really cool I did that that was me so And you know the alliance sucks. Yeah, I, I, they all. He kind of leaned in. Honestly, they all kind of suck. It's a war, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, so the alliance burst in on my island, and they enslaved everyone, and I was the only one who got out. And I hid in the box. And I got off the island. And now I'm here. And I want to kill every last one of them. Who are responsible for all the shit that happened. And the people that I loved who died. Well, I am I'm sorry for your loss, losses. And uh, it is fortunate that you at least survived. Uh, that makes sense, little friend. Yeah, what about you? You just kind of wear your 
your your cloak and you're kind of quiet and you got it you got something going on don't you um, what happened to you I lost two people very important to me and I uh, want to make sure no one else has to go through a similar set of circumstances agreed I feel the same way yeah so let's talk about what color dragon you want to be <laughs> and it is at that point that um, you two are led in to making it. This is the most disappointing tavern I've ever been to. It's not, not really a tavern as much as it is a cantina. It's disappointing. It is disappointing. Where's the morale? Where, where's the... The joy you suck to clean out of this place, Commandant. Speechless, <laughs> eh? You just... You, you've got no words to even describe how <laughs> grotesque this environment is, and yet you want soldiers to fight for you? Listen. Here's what I... Here's what I'm gonna do for you, Commandant. Probably. Say nothing if you agree. <laughs> Don't stop me if you... Okay, okay cool. So, <laughs> look over to uh, Perry. Perry, I feel like it's been a long time since you've, you've done a jig yourself, but I feel like in my bones, you, you've got moves like a jagger. And I believe yeah. that as soon as I start this ditty, you can join in or you can dance, but these people need it. Oh, goodness. They like need. a fire on a cold night. They need <laughs> like me. He's going to come in and like make y'all do this whole thing over I again. Can you can't. I don't remember What songs it. do you know? I can say I'm not going to dance alone in front of a bunch of soldiers. What songs do you know? Sure you are. I, I, know, I know many songs. You you do one first. Sure you are. I will cast <laughs> control person. <laughs> then I will <laughs> follow suit. Huh. How does he resist to dance? Well, have you have you heard of the the the, the beat box? I haven't heard of the. I haven't heard of the, <laughs> the. Do you beat up a box? <laughs> Similar, and not at all. That what I do is I make noises with my mouth that that mimic music. Also, like while, while playing the lute, um, it's it's a new style where I come from. Very popular. If 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 you put a box in front of me, I'll. I'll beat it up. Is that what, is that beat box? Is that what they want to see? Similar, less violent. Oh, I'm let, not sure let me, let me show you. It's simple first. Just a okay. Almost like you're a fly gets in your mouth and you're trying to spit it out. Practically, yes. And then uh, uh, it's almost like if you're like tisking it. Like I don't believe whatever. I don't believe. So if you put those together, so get away, fly, and I don't believe you. So. <laughs> oh yes, the, and the third noise you already have it. It's, a, it's almost like a a cough, like a phlegm in your throat, getting it. So it's oh <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm okay. You hear it? You know what? Let's let's just drink and we'll leave the merriment to come down. Perhaps this is why no one is dancing or singing. Uh, Jesus. Well, I think the, the All right. primary reason why. Folk aren't as joyful as they should be. Is um, losing. Well, against well, obviously. How long have you come? Let's find our friends and sit down. How how long has this been here, Robius? How long have you been fighting? As long as there's been an alliance, there's been the free state of Rompius. When the big three got together and decided that they were going to form an alliance, they wanted everybody to join. Some folks saw the writing on the wall and knew that that would lead to tyranny. So they set themselves apart. And 
What makes you say you're losing? My entire life, I watched the Alliance. The first thing they did was they took all the land that mattered. And then, slowly, piece by piece, they claimed the sea. And I will be goddamned if I watch them take the sky as well. I'll drink to that. But we, uh, coming in, we saw what seems to be many, many um, deterrents against it's against sky travel. You, you had uh, uh, weavens up there, I saw, wyverns, whatever you call them, and uh, Pegasi, what else is up there? Oh, there's any number of flying beasts. Dragons? Do you have dragons? Yeah, you have dragons. No, we don't have dragons. Ah. Uh. You will soon, don't worry. <laughs> We're looking at it. Uh, it is probably important that I should note that uh, no one has seen a dragon in years. Doesn't stop me from hoping. Fair enough. <laughs> um, it's, it's, they used to be spotted on the Sapphire Sea long, long ago when it was first colonized. Um, they were obviously more, uh, from what records exist, they were more prevalent on the mainland. Um, but it's been a long time since folks have seen uh, dragons. Um, but I can assure you that the war against tyranny, the next step doesn't happen on the sea. It happens in the sky. And that's why we've taken these precautions. That's why we've started gathering any beast that can carry a weapon or a soldier into the air or to fight on its own. And well, there are some additional things we're working on as well to try to even the odds. Heimsmark. Is that what you mean? He's, he's working something. Heimsmark. I'm guessing it has to be equal in power. So we're looking at, I don't know. A death ray. A death ray. <laughs> My man says it before I can. Yes, precisely. The alliance, as my intelligence reports that you've noticed, some of you have noted firsthand, have technology from the mainland that allows them to fly. Airships. Yeah. Airships. You've seen this, Oslo? Yes. That's what... And she kind of, like, glances at Adel Bart. Adelbert. That's what took our friends. That's very disturbing. It's also how the hounds can travel so quickly, and it's what renders our natural defenses, the Spears of Jones, inert. I was wondering about that. But they're not our only defense. And we're trying with what abilities we have to even the odds, even against such airships. Seems easy enough to just set up projectiles to to take them out when they arrive over, correct? Uh, That works enough from a defensive stance. But we don't... Oh, take the fight to them. Yes. When you're backed into a corner. We, hmm. we must have a way to take back what has been stolen. And we can't do that hiding here. Dragons. Do, do you know any? No. I wish. Well... Then I guess we'll work with what we have then. But what if we found some? That would be awesome. By all means. We have a vessel. Starwick captain. Hardy crew. Go find us some dragons. Yeah. If, if a thing existed, where would we even begin? Are there rumors of dragons somewhere? <laughs> no. <laughs> Garrett, you, my friend, are privy to such things. Have you heard of 
the dragons anyway? Um, the dragons are, um, they're not as common as they once were, and, and, and frankly, I, I don't anticipate us uh, stumbling across any dragons anytime soon. Well, for being roll honest. perception. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thirteen. You don't see any dragons. Shit! You son of a gun. I was doing good role play, playing along with the story. <laughs> yes. Hey, <laughs> fucking forces a bullshit perception check. Welcome to the game. Um, I don't see any dragons. <laughs> but I'm right here. So you're a tiny dragon. We've talked about this. Don't have any wings. They were talking about the big dragons with wings. Uh, yeah. It's always that. You don't have to be near Garrett when, when he finds a dragon because he's going to cut pieces off of it to make things. Whoa. I thought you were going to say you don't want to be around Garrett whoa. when he's had some wings. <laughs> I've shared, I've shared awesome. a room with him. I would... I, if, if the dragon's alive, I'm going to ask politely. If the dragon's dead, well, then yeah, I'm going to take pieces of it. Dragon bits. Dragon bits. Commandant, it seems we're in a predicament. We, we are here for a period of time, unbeknownst to us. Um, we do need to report back to um, Ramel. I don't know if you have some way, uh, I don't know how you communicate. That would be good, a first order of business. Second order is, what do you need from us? How can we support you? Well, I would f- first have uh, Yarrett here work with old ship and, and uh, bolster our uh, chemical strings um, as far as your ship or crew and what you could do for me well that really depends on what your strengths are okay go on um, if you are fighters um, there's always a need for, for sinking light ships um, if you are not necessarily uh, a naval power, but uh, have a strength of arm. Um, there are people all across the Sapphire Sea on islands, besieged, set upon by the Alliance that need help. It, it's mm. just a thought. In, in Oslo, uh, Captain stepped away for, for a moment, maybe you could speak to this. What are the thoughts on taking Fate's Compass uh, a flying ship? Come on, could, could Heinz Mark make that happen? He's working on something. Could we, could we volunteer our ship to practice with? Mm. Um, wow. It's not really something that uh, would support his endeavors right now. I appreciate the volunteer, but she'd be comfortable in the air I don't know if I'm comfortable in the air on the ship like that frankly were we to develop a um, a flying ship of any sort um, we would entrust it to more trusted agents naturally I understand that Mm -hmm. Um, well I'd love to help Hans Bach if he'd have me and I can keep an eye on Ryder as well um, do, do you have any sort of mechanical expertise? I am a quick, quick learner. You give me something, and you give me ten minutes and, and a set of uh, parameters, and I can whip up anything you need. Hmm. Hey, do you guys have guns? Loads. Do you have tiny guns? Uh, I do not necessarily. Um, I'm sure, yeah. probably. Because I think I can be more helpful if I get one again. Uh, I will speak to the quartermaster. I'm sure something can be arranged. Okay. Okay. And she, she's like clacking her little claws together like, yes. Uh, I'm real good at sneaking around if you need someone to get information or 
steal stuff? Things like that. Uh, Promel is in charge of our intelligence and you've met him. Um, if that's what you would like to do, we can set you to work that task. I need a can first. I'm going to do that sure. first. That'll help you be safety. Not pings. Captain, where will you be? What's an intriguing question? Mm. I don't mean mentally, I mean physically. I get you have a lot going on, just kind of where will you be, where will you be working? I th- you, you wanted um, introductions with the uh, chaplains, yes? Yes, I think that would be helpful. It could be arranged. Aside from that, do you have any ships that are hiring right now? Hiring, um, like sailors? There, there may be a young lad aboard my ship who's seeking a relocation of sorts. Uh, I'm sure you could speak to some of the captains around the dock to see if he has any skills that they might need. Um, extra hands always needed. He certainly has those. Um, Captain, I'm sorry. I'm new here, but um, I, I kind of like our crew. I, I would like to as well. You would like to like our crew? It's... Very complicated. Doesn't and seem like as it's complicated. Perry says that her hand kind of rubs at the rope necklace around her neck. Is that itchy? We could probably just take that off for you. Uh, no, uh, no, never mind that. Um, it's it's complicated. I like our crew as it is as well. If you have, if you're curious, talk to Rail. Ah, sure. Next time I go to the ship, I'll talk to Rail about whatever uh, lover's spat you've got going on. It's no incorrect. I'm not in the know yet. When I'm correct, I'll say the right terms. Yes, I would like an introduction to the chaplains. Can be arranged. And that's where we'll end this episode. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... Quick order of business. Um, Oslo, yeah. Yeah. Peregrine. What is level four? Oh, I hate you. I hate you both. Yay! Diamond has the price of envy. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> they don't tell you about that, <laughs> but it is. You, lo- you lost yeah. an intangible experience, yeah, yeah, so you don't, you don't get to level the rest with. Person I was. I feel like, if anything, I got more. Because of the, what I had to go through, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From having a you from just from absorbed a the other person. Oh that's fine. no! Well, I tell you what. <laughs> yeah, and I had to watch Ryder uh, get sacrificed. Welcome, so that's, welcome that's to level issue. four. That Ryder. wasn't a sacrifice. I, he's what the friend? fuck else yes. are we going to do with him? Like Garrett, we're married now. Yes, Garrett Sky Song. He's also welcome to level four. <gasps> Oh, Garrett and Sky Song or Garrett Sky Song? I still don't. You, I, I still don't. Oh, do you love yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, That's fine. You can say this is one name. Yes. Okay, Garrett, comma, sure. Sky Song. It's Guy yeah. Song. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're really Garrett's just Sky like, it's a, that's our celebrity. No, it's name. Guy it's Song. <laughs> that's your ship name. It's Guy Song. That would be very exciting to do. No one fights like Guy Song. No one kills like Guy Song. No one <laughs> goes to the <laughs> docks <laughs> for <laughs> the <laughs> like Guy Song. Speaking of songs, you've got to be Perfect. a writer then. And so, so the role for humanity uh, <laughs> for this episode is for the Hearing Guys, we're donating I love to the Hearing Guys Foundation. Their mission is to prevent and cure hearing loss and tinnitus through groundbreaking research and to promote hearing health. And so this week we are going to roll for humanity for them. We will include the link at the bottom uh, of the show notes. So if you feel like donating to that, great. We'd love for you to do that. If not, we encourage you at all the games you play at the end, you roll a d20 and donate to a cause that you cherish. So our role today is going to be a 14, going to Hearing Health Foundation. Nice. 
very good. Uh, also, also speaking okay. of songs, Thanks. you may have noticed a certain theme mm-hmm. with our uh, our Patreon ads. I said, Oh, it gets better. It gets better, my dude. Um, <laughs> we here at Rock Stupid are all very powerful warlocks. Oh, thanks yes. to the loving patronage of our patrons, which you can become one on if you go to uh, www.patreon. Hang on. Dot com forward slash lawful stupid podcast, all one word. Um, and uh, uh, to thank our loving patrons, I have written a little song entirely. Entirely original content. <clears throat> Let's talk about Hexblady. Let's talk about Fiend and me. Let's talk about all the good things that our otherworldly path could be. Um, so if you would like to. I love Let's talk it. about. Oh, it's just yeah. it's just a it's a Hex, bit. please. This is a family show. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about. Let's talk about. <laughs> shit. Let's talk about all those tits. Let's talk about all the hex blades. My pastor's definitely gonna stop listening to this now. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if for some reason you like that, uh, well. you can you can come and uh, be a supporter of the show. Um, huh? You can do what? You can be a, a supporter of the show. That's what, what did you I said. say? Yeah. <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> <Incorrect. laughs> um, we we very much and truly appreciate our patrons, and we get super cool rewards for you if you uh, come and uh, kick a few bucks our way, including access to hours and hours of bonus content. I almost said boner content uh, appropriately enough. <laughs> Freudian slip. Freudian slip. Bonus, yeah. <laughs> bonus content. I take, um, I take that Freudian slip right off you. Yeah. Um, that's it. I, I can't continue. <laughs> I, I made too too grave of an error, and that, that's all. We we love yous. If, if, if you listen hard enough, I'm the content becomes bad. If you play it backwards, all you hear is nonsense. That's true. <laughs> if you enjoy my, if, if you enjoy Dwayne's voice enough, oh, specifically Dwayne's, <laughs> all six of them. <laughs> Why not? I'm sorry, oh. I love you very much. Oh. Seven now. The mythical seven mythical voice. Seven. Nah. I broke him. You guys are talking <laughs> shit. I'm like picking spells out. This I is can't roll my yeah, I can't roll my hit points. <laughs> yeah. Let's roll our hit dice. Yeah. yeah. I'll roll it for you. Oh. Confirmed. You did that. Oh, I rolled nice. a five. Peregrine. Oh wait! Yeah. I get to roll a bigger one. Yeah, I'm assuming you're taking yes. this level one paladin. So D or D10? D10. 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 You got hey. plus something or other. Hell Eight. yeah! Plus you nice. guys. Better roll. Oh. Oh. Or two. I let you, I let you re-roll a thousand ones. I will not feel bad about the one two you roll. Not the two. Yep. That's fair. Just be a halfling and get lucky. But then you get a two. Anyway, if you want to discuss other D&D related things with other fans of Lawful Stupid, you should hop into our Discord and we can talk about, you know, bullshit roles that you've had in the past or in the present or bullshit roles that you think that you're going to get in the future. Uh, you can hop into our questions, tips and tricks to see about, you know, what what recommendations people have for the different classes that you want to play or for how to run a, a certain size party uh, or even, you know, how to deal with things like metagaming. We have a plethora of knowledge and wisdom and mostly opinions it's mostly opinions it's all opinions uh <laughs> and just you know hang out with other people who love lawful stupid who love D and who may even work out a game to play with you uh so come make friends and come discuss the show with us on our discord come and join our discord we'll be, we'll be waiting, waiting for you uh, hey if you want to support the show uh, you can do that in many ways, but one of the easiest ways is go to store.lawfulstupid.org and for a limited time only, you can buy stickers in memoriam of Delmore and Finnegan. This is true. 
As we go on, we remember. Uh, I'm Scott Shainsaw, the the Tiangian Muster, and I'm here to remind you to tweet about the show using the hashtag StupidCast. One Twitterer out there has been tweeting like crazy using the hashtag StupidCast, and I'm here to sing their praises on the show. Um, well, I believe in you, and you believe in heaven. You're my best friend at Thunder Arms 7. That's me. Ted <laughs> picks <laughs> 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 the show on his personal again. He's in the hashtag Stupacast, and I'm honor bound to sing his praises. <laughs> one day. I'm one day. Around, but I was like, someday. I'll think he's kidding. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then, of course, I must leave you with a question to think about and grow on and not answer. So, what's um, going to answer it? I know. I know. Why don't the hairs on your arm get split ends? Oh. Oh. Who's to say? Huh. Me. Next time on Lawful Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.